Angela Yee, I'm Angela Yee. Hey, Chella. Hey, Cheryl. Chella H, big H. What up? Chella H, big H. That's right. All right. She's my guest co-host. One more day of this. Yeah. Aw. It'll be okay. I'll be back. All right. Well, we do have a fun show for you today because I have the creator and cast member of the show, Johnson, that's on Bounce TV. Deji LeRae is going to be joining us alongside Thomas Q. Jones. You know him from playing in the NFL, but then making that transition to acting and producing. And Earthquake, a legendary comedian who happens to have a special called Legendary on Netflix right now. They'll all be joining us talking about the show Johnson. It's coming up to its fourth season, so we'll discuss. But it's great for guys. There's a lot of uh, uh, great uh, show topics on there for y'all. All right. Well, in the meantime, let's get the show started with some positivity. Let's shine a light. 800-292-5150. Let us know who you want to spread some love to. It's way up. I'm going to shine. I'm going to shine. Turn your lights on, y'all. Turn your lights on. Spreading love to those who are doing greatness. Shine a light on them. Shine a light on them. It's time to shine a light on them. All right, it's way up. I'm Angela Yee. My girl, Chella, is here, guest hey. hosting all week. And I know you want to shine a light on somebody, right, Chella? Yes, I do. I want to shine the light on my girl, Miss Melinda. Mm-hmm. She's one of my favorite people in Chicago. She does media, and she also uh, into radio. She opened up a wellness spot on the mm-hmm. south side of Chicago, and she just put her book out. Oh, she what's got, her book? It, it's called Boss Up. Okay. by Melinda Norris. She's the wife of Grammy Award winning producer Excel. So shout out to Melinda. She's successful and what I love about her most is her character. I'm a big fan of character. All right, let me see. I'm I'm looking at I'm looking her up right now. Yes, girl. Hey Melinda. Hey Melinda. <laughs> All right. Well, that is um our shine of light from yes. Chella since you're doing uh the show this week and guest yes. hosting will let you do it today and tomorrow that's right now who do you guys want to spread some love to who do you want to shine a light on 800-292-5150 Mike what's good who do you want to shine a light on you oh okay we'll take it <laughs> you are such a positive role model and influence and I love hearing it, hearing your inspirational quotes every day and the, the way that you inspire people oh well thank you where are you from Florence South Carolina all right, I appreciate you so much. Thank you. That that's love. That made me feel good today. Yes, ma'am. And don't work too hard. Okay, I'll try not to. All right, now. <laughs> All right, take care. All right. Well, that was Shine a Light, and when we come back, we have your Yeti. And man, this is really sad. We're going to talk about kidney failure. We'll tell you what famed athlete, what NBA former NBA star is going through it, and says he won't live long without a transplant. They say it's truth in the room. Ah! From industry shade to all the gossip. Talk to me. Angela's spilling that yee tea. Talk to him. It's way up with Angela Yee. I'm Angela Yee. My girl Chella is guest hosting. Girl, Chella H. Hey. H. Yee tea time. Now, former NBA star Nate Robinson said he may not have long to live if he doesn't get a kidney replacement. He's been dealing with kidney failure for about six years. He told the Daily Mail he just wants to make the best of it as much as he can. He opened up about renal kidney failure back in 2022. He'd been dealing with it privately for four years back then. But he was ready to be the voice for others who are going through the same thing. Here's what he had to say on the OG show. It's wear and tear on you, you know, mentally. And every morning I go into dialysis at 5.30 in the morning or something like that. Because that's the hardest part is the emotional side. Because for me, I never quit anything in my life. You know what I'm saying? So I can't quit this. And there have been times where I wanted to give up. And I'm like, I can't because I don't know how. No, you know, he does dialysis. And sometimes that can lead to painful vomiting. And that will leave him hospitalized for a day or two. Mm. And he said, if I didn't go to dialysis, I wouldn't live probably longer than a week or two. So he can't miss a day. He said, I go in for four hours, three days a week, four hours a day. And they clean my blood to get my toxins out. And they help me out a lot because that's how I'm living. Isn't that awful? Yeah, that's a lot. Man, I really hope that he's able to receive the kidney transplant because if not, you know, who knows what can happen. But he's got painful vomiting. Um, And he said things have been a roller coaster for him. So, you know, he learned in 2006 his high blood pressure actually damaged his kidneys. Wow. All right. So we're praying for you, Nate Robinson. Yes. All right. Trina has announced her new book, The Baddest. Yes. That's coming out October 8th. I know you and Trina are cool, too. Yeah, that's my girl. We just did a new song, actually. So be on the lookout for that. Okay. What's the name of the song? It's called "Mm, In Your Face. Whoa. Are we allowed to say that? 
No, I'm kidding. <laughs> it's just uh, in your face. All right. Well, shout out to Trina. I cannot wait yeah. to read this book. Um, you know, they said she'll be, it says, I'll, I'll give you a quote. In the baddest, Trina's voice is, as always, powerful, insightful, witty, and provocative, yes. while also showcasing her vulnerability and deep love for her family, home, and music. Yes. All I right. Love me some Trina. Shout out to the baddest B. All right. Venus Williams has announced her new health and wellness book. It's called Goal. Uh, well, she said the goal is to share the tips and tricks that helped her. It's called Strive. It's a new book on wellness that comes out this fall. And she said she wants to help readers achieve the lifestyle they want by implementing a set of principles in their lives. You know, as an athlete, and not just an athlete, but a star athlete. She said, I know the perseverance and consistency it takes to accomplish your goals and get true results. With Strive, my goal is to share the tips and tricks that help me in my own personal wellness and nutrition journey. I would love to see that because when I tell you Serena, it, I'm um, Venus Williams and Serena, both of them, yeah. she is a winner. So yes. to be able to see what it is that was going on with her mentally and the things that she's done, she's going to highlight eight essential uh, tenets that have been helpful. Observe, appreciate, balance, enrich, soothe, believe, inspire, and strive. Yes. All right. And one more thing y'all will be excited about. Eminem, by the way, there's a lot of stands in this studio. <laughs> he wants fans to share their story for an upcoming stands documentary. And he put out an open call to his social media followers. He shared a link. And when you click on that link on his page at Eminem, then you'll see a questionnaire that will be used so they can figure out who will be on this short list uh, for stands? And so the forum has questions like, what are some things in your life that you've accomplished thanks to Eminem and his music? Do you remember when Eminem took a break from touring, releasing albums circa 2005? If so, how did that impact you? Uh, who in this room deserves to be in this stands documentary? Dan. Dan. <laughs> Actually, that's not even his real name, but it rhymes with Stan. Right. And he changed his name to Dan because he's such a fan. There's and a form and that rhymes too. I'm Nick definitely too. filling out that form. You are? Yes. Absolutely. Okay. Well, let's see. Paul Rosenberg, Eminem. Hope you're hey. listening. Tracy, I hope you guys are listening. We got let's some go. stands in the room. Let's go. <laughs> well, I'm not a stan, but I am whatever you well, say then, I am. Let's ooh, say that. That was clever. All you right. Know you're not. <laughs> All right, well, that was your UTM. When we come back, we have a bout last night. That's where we discuss what we did last night. Ooh. Chella, you slept. But um, I did a lot of stuff. So. And you went to sleep earlier than me after I woke up. So we even. Well, yeah, you had a nice nap. All right. Yeah, yeah. It's way up. About last night is next. All right, it's way up. I'm here. Chella's here. Right. It's your girl, Chella H. 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 Big H. And about last night. So yesterday, and this was an important topic that... Um, and a serious one. Yesterday, I was with Paula, who was one of the founders of Black Health. Right. And what they do is they really focus on uh, some of the conditions that lead to us having a lot of, of issues with our health, in particular, cardiovascular disease yeah. is what we were focused on. So yesterday I was filming um, an interview because I was talking about issues I have with having high cholesterol. And a lot of these things are what lead to heart disease mm -hmm. and, you know, high blood pressure, things like that. We were just talking about Nate Robinson and how his high blood pressure led to his kidney failure. Right. And so we were having a conversation about how I had to take control over things that I was doing in my life and make some real lifestyle changes to make sure that I was uh, protecting myself and protecting my heart. Mm -hmm. And you were talking to me about your mom. Yeah, my mama, she had two heart attacks, actually, back to back. We didn't even know because some people don't know when you actually have a heart attack so she had to undergo surgery within seven days wow double bypass surgery so thank god that she survived that but like heart health is is very important right and i had um dr warren jones and this interview is going to be on next week but he's a cardiologist and he he spoke and so did carl hasty who is our speaker for the new york state assembly yeah and you know just talking about different conditions in our environment that can lead to us having heart health issues and, and disparities in health care yeah. and all of that but you know we're always talking about things that we need to do and so i was thinking about all the things that i do to make sure once i found out i had high cholesterol to make sure that I wouldn't have to take medication for the rest of my life. Because think about it, right? With the diabetes, that can yeah. lead to heart health, health, heart disease also. And people are taking medication every single day yes. to control that. And I did not want to have to do that. So fortunately, I went and had my blood work done and found out that I needed to change some things. And so I walk a lot, as yep. you know. Chella be like, we walking, I mean, I love it now. At first it was like, come on, why we got to walk 25 blocks? <laughs> but I appreciate it and I needed it. 
And when I go to the airport, I don't get on the moving walkway. I walk. I try to walk upstairs. I just try to do little things because I know we can put stuff off and say, I'm too busy. I'm working. I'm doing this. I don't have yeah. time to work out. But there's a lot of apps that you could use mm. to work out. There's even just this morning, we were doing some stretches. Yeah, we were. You can go on YouTube and you can look at some workouts that you could do at home. But I just want to encourage everybody to do that. And we'll be discussing that more yes. next week on Wealth Wednesday because health is wealth. And then another thing that we did earlier this week was lip service. Mm. And, you know, I want to do a pick aside with you guys when we come back. Shella and I have been arguing about this nonstop because yes. you cold hearted. But uh, we had Terry <laughs> and Danae on. They have a podcast together at this grown age, at this big age, yep. at this big age. And one of the things that Danae was talking about was her husband used to share a pet. They had a cat together with his ex. Mm. So they were co-parenting this ex. And here's what they said. We tried relationship counts therapy or whatever a couple years ago. What made you guys decide to do that? Because we were having like disagreements. Like he has this cat. What's wrong no. with the cat? The cat is a cat he shared with his ex. Uh, <laughs> so when Devon well, walked in with the cat, why did you say the cat can't come? I did. And at the time, he was co-parenting the cat. So that's also Ooh. why we have that's rough. such a huge issue. And I say pets can be like kids. And so it's hard when you go through a breakup. Who yeah. gets to keep the pet? And so maybe it is a matter of, I mean, I went through a breakup where we had a dog and, it, you know, he kept the dog, but I got to visit. Mm. And is that an issue? And you think they should just get, he should just get rid of it. I say the ex person should just keep the pet, whether it's a but cat or dog. But which ex? Whoever, I don't know, but if somebody with me, ain't no cat or no dog coming <laughs> that you co-parenting no cat, no dog. That's ridiculous. Well, let's see what you guys think about this. 800-292-5150. Pick a side. If you're with somebody and they're co-parenting a pet with their ex, would you have a problem? What's the solution? 800-292-5150. Pick a side. It's not just right or wrong. It's about what you believe. It's time to pick a side and stay there. All right, it's Way Up with Angela Yee. I'm Angela Yee. And Chella. Chella. Is here. And it's time for you guys to pick a side. Today's topic, we are talking about what would you do if you were dating someone and they were co-parenting a pet with their ex. Here is what happened on Lip Service with the At This Big Age podcast, Tahiri and Danae. Here is Danae speaking about her situation. We tried relationship counts therapy or whatever a couple years ago what made you guys decide to do that because we were having like disagreements like he has this cat what's wrong no. with the cat the cat is a cat he shared with his ex uh, <laughs> so when devon well, walked in with the cat why did you say the cat can't come i did and at the time he was co-parenting the cat so that's also Ooh. why we have that's wrong such a huge issue mm. what do you think about co-parenting a pet mm -hmm. tell her you say no no absolutely not all right, well, Mike Grinding on Twitter says, I picked the dog side. Don't play with the dog's emotions. You can't come in and out of their life like that. We're talking about cats. Hmm. And I personally think it's okay, as long as it's not out of control. If you had a pet with somebody and you would like to still see the pet sometimes, that's not a big deal, okay? It's not, but Especially it's if you trust your partner and you don't think anything is going on, then you should be okay with it. I co-partner, I co, I co um, raised a, a dog with my ex. And we didn't have any issues with that. Right. And what happened eventually? To the well, dog. eventually the dog died, unfortunately. Rest in oh. peace. But we, it wasn't really an issue. Right. You know, but it's a reason just to I knew that on. dog since she was like a few months old. I get it. All right. Well, what do you guys think? 800 292 5150. Pick a side. Miss Daisy, what you think? I said, let that cat go. I speak as a married woman who had an ex before he met me five years ago. I will buy him another pet that looks just like the one he's going to have to leave behind. Okay. And she will not be calling us to check on no pet. Exactly. She won't be able to call him and say, bitch, look at it. Hmm. She will have that pet to check on it from her home, not ours. Let it go. Oh That's my gosh. Right. What if you? What if they had a kid together? Would you feel the same way about a kid? They Pets no. are like kids. Guess what? I'm so glad you asked. They did have a kid. And you know what? We <laughs> co-parent through the courts. The courts see the whole conversation. Ain't no texting through the phone. It's all going through the court app. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, thank you for sharing with us. You've been through it. Okay, yeah. love y'all. <laughs> hey, Linda, how are you? Hi, how are you? I can't believe I'm talking to you. <laughs> what do you think about your significant other co-parenting a pet with their ex? I would be all for it because I know I'm a pet person. You have attachment to your pet that, you know, people who are not into animals like that, 
they can't even relate. Okay. And if this is a problem already in the relationship, it might be a precursor to problems later. The pet might be doing both of them a favor. Maybe they're really not right for each other. Right. See, and that's what I think, too. Some people just aren't pet people. But when you have a pet that's, like, part of the family... I guess you understand right. it more than people who are like, right. I don't care, I don't have no pet. The, the pet is the death. So a relationship is the pet, they go in the way. So you would understand it if you were with somebody and they were co-parenting? Absolutely. Okay. Say y'all just laid up caking and she just steady calling him about this dog that keep throwing up for hours and they just on the phone talking about the dog. That'd be cool with you? Well, that would be kind of weird because why would y'all be talking so long about it? If there's a problem, we just address it. We don't have to be on the phone about it all the time. That's, yeah, what did you take the dog like, to the to the uh, vet? Like she's using the animal to you know to talk to him. I don't know. I say just cut all the pets off. He <laughs> FaceTiming her. FaceTime her with the dog while y'all laid up. He got his back turned to you on FaceTime with her showing he just he's made showing him the dog. Scenario. I don't like that. Because I would be like, are you going to take the dog to the vet? Just like if it was a kid throwing up. Are you going to take the kid to the hospital right. or just keep right. FaceTiming like me? Oh, that don't make sense. Tell her just you making stuff up. Really extra, don't problem. even listen it's to It's an extra thing. problem. Thank you for calling. Thank me later. You're welcome. <laughs> hey, Lorenzo, how are you? I'm good. So what do you think about dating somebody and they're co-parenting a pet with their ex? I think that that's just an excuse to hold on. Yeah. Really. Most do if they're in a relationship with a woman and they stepfathering and that relationship over, they ain't co-parenting with that kid. Right. So how you going to co-parent with a pet? That cat or dog will probably survive better on the street on his own than with you. Wait, now people. hold on. You want to put the dog out on the street? Yo, she do what she want with it. I'm, when we wow. Done, we done. All right. Well, thank you for calling. But that was you guys weighing in on Pick a Side, 800-292-5150, in case you couldn't get through. Definitely leave a message. And when we come back, we have your Yeeti. And you guys will not believe this. OJ Simpson just passed away. We'll talk about it. It's way up. Yo, she about to blow the lid up off this spot. Let's get it. Oh, yeah. Angela's spilling that Yeeti. Come and get the tea. It's way up. I'm Angela Yee and Chella's here. Yes. Girl, Chella H. 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 Not the lowercase. And there's a lot of Yeetie happening right now. O.J. Simpson reportedly just died of cancer. He was 76 years old. His family announced it on social media. Mm. On his page, on April 10th, our father, Arenthal James Simpson, succumbed to his battle with cancer. He was surrounded by his children and grandchildren during this time of transition. His family asked that you please respect their wishes for privacy and grace the Simpson family. He was actually in Vegas and he had been receiving treatment after a prostate cancer diagnosis. Um, and he did play 10 years in the NFL, but of course we all know about the infamous uh, trial that he did have. Yep. And again, the family is asking for privacy and grace. Yes. Pray up for them. All right. Now, Mr. C, he is a radio icon. He also reportedly died. He was 57 years old. You know, he was very, uh, he also played a role in launching the careers of a lot of different artists, but the notorious B.I.G. Right. is one that we always credit him with. And he also was a DJ and producer for Big Daddy Kane. Um, and he was working for Odyssey's 94.7 The Block in New York. So again, uh, rest in peace to Mr. C. And our yes. condolences go out to his family, his close friends. I saw a kid Capri posted it. The first person I saw post it was Ed Lover. Uh, yeah. 50 Cent also gave his RIP, MC Light, a lot of iconic people yes. who he was close to. So rest in peace to Mr. C as well. All right. Now, Usher has been named the sexiest man of the moment mm. by Essence magazine. They said he is a true showman who goes above and beyond on the stage. The crooner could be expected to be a ball of kinetic energy off stage two. But they said he was very calm during their conversation. Usher had an amazing past couple of years, by the way. Yes, he did. I mean, that is somebody who for decades has been present, still looks young. Yes, he do. Uh, still doing the thing. And Vegas residencies are never the same, I think, after Usher. Yes. So everybody's wanting to do Vegas residencies now. Which, by the way, Mariah Carey has a Vegas residency. She just extended it. So she announced that on her uh, on her Twitter page that will be at Dolby Live at MGM Park. She added more shows from July 26th to August 10th due to overwhelming demand. Fans have expressed their excitement on social media. Tickets are going on sale April 19th at 10 a.m. I'm going to go see that. I definitely. Let's go. 
Let's go to Vegas. There's so many residencies I want to see in Vegas right now. Yes. All right. And Nicki Minaj, Travis Scott, and Playboy Cardi are going to be headlining Rolling Loud Europe 2024. That was just announced. Those tickets will be available for the general public for Rolling Loud Europe starting on Friday. So make sure you guys line up to get that. In the meantime, Nicki Minaj was in Boston and she did some surprise performances with other female rappers. JT, Akbar V, Malibu Mitch. Katie. Katie got banned. Chicago. Oh, and okay. Bia, they all joined her on stage and they also sat down and did a live together. And here's what Nikki had to say. Okay, so you guys, I just wanted to say from the bottom of my heart how appreciative I am of these queens for coming here and gracing Gag City with their aura, with their light, with their energy. Mm. All right. So oh, no, that's right. There you have it. What a nice surprise. There's a whole live with all of them just talking about it. And JT wrote, I couldn't hear myself. OMG, Onika, words can't come close to how I feel. Bia says, so much fun. Thank you, Nikki. Akbar said, thank you, Nikki Minaj. I love you, baby. You so real and a G for this. I love you. Um, so, yes. And Katie got banned said, I'm still in disbelief. Gag City. Thank you, Nikki. Love you forever. All right. Well, that is your UT. And when we come back, we have Under the Radar. These are the stories that are not necessarily in the headlines. They are flying under the radar. We'll talk about the mux- most luxurious air Airport in America. You were tired about this, but we'll discuss its way up. It's in the news that relates to you. These stories are flying under the radar. It's way up. I'm Angela Yee. My girl Chell is here. That's right. Hey. And it's time for Under the Radar. So, uh, All Clear Travel Insurance released their findings about which airport was the most luxurious in the world. This was reported on Travel and Leisure. I'm just giving all this background so you know that this is not a biased report. This is something that was studied, okay? From a and New they raked airports based on how many nearly four and five star hotels there are, how many designer stores there are, how many passenger lounges they have. The airport needs to have a minimum of 10 airport lounges to even be in the running. Hmm. And they also judge them based on whether high-flying visitors could find a champagne or caviar bar, which is the epitome of luxury. So, do you know what was ranked number one in the United States? Also, number 11 globally. Which airport? Oh, here. JFK in New York was yeah. ranked number one in the United States. So, congratulations. Now, globally in Dubai, their Dubai International Airport was number one for the most luxurious airport in the world. I can see that. I saw a lot of people saying JFK, really? Right. But- you know, some one person said JFK is the absolute worst worst airport I have ever been in. Yeah, that's not true. I mean, now, not you must the not worst. have ever been in no other airports if that's the worst. Not the worst, but I can't see the best. Come on now. Now I think that it also depends on what terminal you're leaving from at JFK because some of the terminals are amazing. So shout out to JFK. All right, now in Newark, curfew is set to begin for kids under age 18. That's going to go into effect starting tomorrow. Mm. Mayor Ross Baraka and Public Safety Director Fritz Frage announced that starting Friday, they're doing their juvenile safety initiative. Kids have to remain within 100 yards of their homes between 11 p.m. and 5.30 a.m. After the first violation, the minor will get a verbal warning and be taken home. After more violations, the child can be taken to a youth crisis facility and be released to a guardian. Wow. Wow, that's... um. Interesting because they've done studies and they say youth curfews have little to no effect on crime and harm prevention. But another person is saying that they believe curfews work. Amir Washington, who's the CEO of the Boys and Girls Club of Newark, said this isn't a new thing. Curfews were in place when I was a kid. It's good. And what we believe in here at the Boys and Girls Club of Newark. So we shall see what happens. We need that in Chicago. I thought y'all had a curfew for a period of time. I mean, I don't know, but they ain't standing on it. But 100 yards is still far. And by the way, these are for kids under the age of 18. So, I mean, that's what if like you're coming from somebody else's house, you know, 11 p.m. is kind of early still. If it's the weekend, summertime's coming up. All right. Well, that is your under the radar. Now, you know, we have the way up mix at the top of the hour. Plus, we have the creator of the show Johnson on Bounce TV. Deji LeRae is going to be joining us alongside Earthquake and Thomas Q. Jones. They'll be here talking about season four of their show Johnson starting on Bounce TV. And you can watch seasons one through three on Hulu right now. It's way up. Way up. (laughs) Just like to talk like they Angela Yee, like they Angela Yee. Man, she's spilling it all. This is Yee T. Way up. All right, it's Way Up. I'm Angela Yee. Chella's here with me. That's right. 
You know, I'm always looking at what's trending. OJ Made in America is trending now that OJ has passed yeah. at the age of 76 in Vegas. All right, well, let's get into this Yeetie. Chris Brown has released the 1111 Deluxe album. That's about five months after releasing the standard version. It has 13 new tracks. Um, but there is one song that everybody's talking about. I saw Quavo was trending uh, because of this. And the song is called Freak on the Deluxe album. And here's what he said. Booty from Miami, she from Puerto Rico. Okay, now make up my whole this ain't gonna make a sequel. Sipping in 1942, cause I don't do no Quavo. Freak, if she like Casamigos, not the Migos. So, mm. it was a play on words. It was a double entendre. Sipping that 1942, cause I don't do no Quavo. Quavo. Mm -hmm. And uh, she like Casamigos, not the Migos. And Ooh. he also said before that FM, my OBs ain't gonna make us equal. Huh. So. He we know, know what, what that's he, about. Yeah, because yeah, Flavor was, was dating Karuche after him. Yeah. Whew, I thought that beef was over a long time ago. That was so long ago. But cleverly right. done. Yeah. And it definitely had uh, Quavo trending. All right. In other music news, Baby Tate was on um, on the radar doing her freestyle. By the way, Baby Tate is an amazing artist. I loved her Sexploration musical EP. She was on Lip Service uh, right when that came out. And... So anyway, here she is um, on the radar. She's talking about a lot of different things that people have said about her. Here's what she said. Now, I was born in 1996, so of course it's some shit I done picked up on. They say I blink like Mickey, dress like Kimmy, get real freaky on the track like Missy, cocky like Riri, rough like EVE, -E, but I don't understand why they won't let me be me. This shit's B-A-B-Y-T-A-T-E, the one they want to shut up, but they never, ever will. Shout out to Miss Lauren, I might die up on that hill, all alone with nothing but all of my hundred dollar bills. Sound okay. dope. And listen, that's a great way to address people always saying, you sound like this person, you look like this person. I feel like they do that to female rappers all the time. They try to act like you stole it from somebody else. Yeah, when, do. of course, like there's certain things that might be similar or maybe you were influenced by somebody or maybe not. Yeah. And then sometimes as a female artist, like I could hear my lines that never came out and I hear somebody say them too. A few of them. Right. You know, it happens. Yeah. And it, it could be just that they thought the same thing. Right. It never even came out. So it's not like they got it. Right. Great man think alike all right now lady london in the meantime was on cosmic kev and here is her freestyle where she's addressing some things as well let's clear this out lately it's been empty as the head that wears the crown they just want to shit lonely talent it's immensely we challenge chemically imbalanced I'm that as fuck, I got a truck that I drive I'm such a vibe, my piece of rob, I'm high I ate a fly, my ass clapping half a bar ad living double platinum that's rap <laughs> All right. That was a different type of flow. But shout out to Lady London. People are loving her right now, too. She was up here as well. All right. And Curb Your Enthusiasm, that series finale, got the season's best audience yet. 1.1 million viewers on Sunday night. And so season 10, it's come to an end. Pretty funny. This is, I don't normally see Larry David doing press, but he did a little bit of press for Curb Your Enthusiasm this year. And Tia Murray, my next chapter, she has a reality series that's set at WeTV. Um, so, you know, she did do Tia and Tamara when she was uh, when she was younger. Yeah. And now she has this. So shout out to her. She finalized her divorce with Corey Hardrick last year. And now she's ready for her next chapter. And I think a lot of people are going to end up watching that. Um, yeah, so shout out to everybody. Megan Thee Stallion is going to be on Celebrity Family Feud. Oh, so I that should be fun. Neo is going to be on as well. And shout out to my guy, Vaughn. I see he's on here um, in the picture with Neo. So I guess he's going to be on that team. So I'm a little nervous on who's going to win that. But shout out to you anyway, Vaughn. <laughs> All right, well, that is your Yee Tea. And when we come back, we have Ask Yee. 800 292 5150 is a number. Any question you have, me and Chella are here to help. We're That's very right. different in our approach. She's cold blooded, and I mean, I'm an empath. I'm I an just empath. keep it a hundred, you know? <laughs> I mean, you do too, but in a. I'm a nicer. I'm, right. I'm nice, and you're cold blooded. I'm brutal. Yeah, you're brutal. Yeah. Savage. Yeah. All right, well, that is your Yee Tea. And again, Ask Yee when we come back. In the meantime, let's throw it back to some Chris Brown. Here's Run It. It's way up. Whether it's relationship or career advice, Angela's dropping facts. So you should know. You should know. This is Ask Yee. What's up? It's Way Up with Angela Yee. I'm Angela Yee, and my girl Chella is here. That's right. We give different types of advice. You're hardcore. Yes. I'm too nice. Yeah. Um, but we have China on the line. What's up, China? How you doing, Yee? I hate that I say this like China, like Donald Trump. Um, but what is, <laughs> what is your question for Ask Yee? 
I've been in a relationship with this guy for five years. Mm -hmm. When we first started, he was uh, in a relationship that I didn't know about. Ooh. And he was having the main girl around the family, mm. his family. Okay. I left him when I was like, you know what, he's with this other chick. I'm going to just fall back. Right. And let him be in that relationship. You did the right thing. I ain't trying to be okay. your side piece. And you bringing this other woman around the family and everything. Okay. We did get back together nine months later oh. after the breakup. Okay. The family never really seemed like they were too interested in trying to get to know me. So when he's having functions, I'm feeling like left out. Oh, right. so he doesn't bring you around at all? No. Like we had a church date for Easter. And then he going to say the day before Easter, oh, I meant to tell you that my mom is having service at her church. And after that, my sister's going to have dinner at her house. And me and the sister don't get along. Actually, he didn't even have the dinner at his sister's house. He wound up being at his house. So he lied. But before, yeah. So before actually the dinner came, I was like, well, I mean, you can still go to your sister's house and I can still be at your house like I normally do. So he changed the subject and act like he didn't hear what I said. So I left it be. So you ain't go to the dinner? I wasn't invited. Right. Never invited whenever the family's around. Right. That's because they still cool with the girl. Either she was there. You know how her sisters play both sides. And they just favor her. And he probably still cracking her. Well, is, you think the other girl is still around? I'm not going to say. I don't think so. Do you watch her Instagram page? I don't want to be watching nobody's stuff. I also think that the way that this relationship even started was not a relationship, a trust from the beginning. And he should be doing everything that he can to make you feel comfortable right. and make you feel like uh, he can be trusted because he does owe that to you. Mm -hmm. And if you're not comfortable with something and he's not doing something about it, then he's not the right person. Right. When people show you who they are, believe them. If he's really with you and this is what he sees for his future, his family would have to accept that and right. he would start working on that now. Mm -hmm. it's, it's not fair for you to be uncomfortable and for you to be left out of things and for you to be alone while he's enjoying his time that shows me that he's not really considerate of how you feel at all you know people will treat you how you allow them yep. to treat you and if he knows that he could do that and you might give him a little bit of a hard time but you're still gonna be there then he doesn't have any incentive to not do things like this to you anymore you'll be alright though just you know get it together you know what you know so you got to be realistic with yourself. Well, thank you so much. Thank All you. All right, China. We wish you luck, though, with mm -hmm. this. And definitely call back and check in. Sure will. Sure okay. Will. You did thank it for you. nine months. You can keep it going. Right. You moved on for Summertime nine months. Summertime coming up, girl. <laughs> we outside. Okay. <laughs> outside. Thank, thank you. you. All right. Thank yeah, you, China. Enjoy. All right, well, that was Ask Ye, 800-292-5150 in case you couldn't get through. And when we come back, we have from the show Johnson on Bounce TV, Earthquake, Thomas Q. Jones, and Deji LeRae joining us. It's Way Up. Turn it up. You vibing Way Up with Angela Yee. Come right back. More now. What's up? It's Way Up with Angela Yee. And when I tell you these guys in here, in their own individual rights, but as a collective, are way up. We got Earthquake in the building. Hey, yeah. girlfriend. I've been trying to get you up here. We yeah. got, okay, Deji LeRae. Yes, yes. What's up, y'all? A.K.A. Greg. <laughs> <laughs> and, of course, Thomas Jones is here with us today, too. A.K.A. Omar. Yes, Omar Johnson. Omar okay. Johnson. All the Johnsons and then yeah. Earthquake as well. Your character's name is... Um, Oh, Booker. I'm trying to remember. Yeah, Booker. <laughs> I love seeing the dynamic with you and D.L. Hughley on there together. Yes, yes. As the OGs on the show. Shout out yeah. to D.L. But yeah, also yeah. Uh, somebody who will take down your mama as mm -hmm. well. <laughs> your mama need love. <laughs> <laughs> but let's get into it because all of you are on the show on Bounce TV, the hit show on Bounce TV, yeah. Johnson, which I know has to be amazing for like people to watch because I felt like guys really needed a show like this. That's right, yeah. I mean, black men have notoriously been portrayed as one-dimensional mm -hmm. on television historically, and it was time, it was time for a show like this to, to show us being more complex and more nuanced and just getting into the reasons of why we do what we do, mm -hmm. you know? Um, I still don't understand, no. You still don't <laughs> Why y'all do what y'all do sometimes? <laughs> it changes, you know, it changes, <laughs> you know, but um, we like to explore all that on the show. We like to give um, black men and black women a very strong voice, a very honest voice, a very authentic voice, um, and we're having a good time doing it. We, um, 
broke a lot of records in season one. We mm-hmm. uh we were the highest rated half hour show on the network starting in season one. Okay, bounce yep. TV, let's yep. go. Yep. Bounce yep. it up. You know? <laughs> and and we got some legends on the show too. We got Earthquake, yeah. we got DL, we got Cedric, and uh, Angela Yee was and on we had we had we have the legendary Angela, Angela, Angela Yee on the yes. show in season one. <laughs> season one, okay. Yes. <laughs> yes. And Deja, this was your creation. You created the show. Mm-hmm. Yes. Earthquake, Thomas Q. Jones, and Deji LeRae from the show Johnson on Bounce TV are here with me. Greg, even with your character, you ended oh, up, Lord. well, Greg's <laughs> character, Deji, um, you end up running into your ex, My ex. fiance, who, by the yep. way, you didn't tell your current girlfriend was ever your fiance. And then you also didn't give her a heads up that guess what? I ran into her. People will call that being dishonest, and I guess it is being dishonest. Um, I think Greg had a reason for doing what he did. He wanted to protect his current situation. He knew that if he was truthful with her up front, then mm-hmm. they probably wouldn't have gotten to the point to where they got into. You know, uh, she would have taken it a certain way, especially the way that she took it. The fact that he went over for dinner or went mm-hmm. to hang out with his ex. You know, that was the end of their relationship, essentially, on Which the show. Which was unnecessary, too. Well, what was it? Yeah. That? It was how long ago? Uh, I think it was like maybe a year, a year and a half yeah. on the show. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, but I, mean, that, I think I think that's the point. Is like everybody's everybody's different. Everybody's right. going to react different. Some women will look past it, and some women are, will say absolutely not. You know? What are some things that are okay to omit when you're in a relationship and dating somebody? You know, omitting and lying. There's a blurred line there. Mm-hmm. You know, some people will say like, "Well, you know, I just didn't disclose that information." Somebody would say that's dishonest. What are some things when you're in a relationship that it's okay to not tell the other person. Mm. For me, anything that happened before I met you. What? Anything? <laughs> That's anything? So it's okay to not be like I was engaged before. I might say that. Anything below that? It's not, I mean, what about kids? Like no. having kids? Of course. Yeah, 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 yeah absolutely. Yeah, yeah. I can't hide my yeah. children yeah. like they drug money. Yeah. Yeah. Here she come. Get underneath the <laughs> get underneath the bed. My new yeah, woman no. is coming here. But I think the past is the past. Uh-huh. I, I deal with you on the day that I met you. What if she mm. used to be an escort and she just didn't tell you? You don't think that's necessary? Mm. No, I be like, so that's where you got them skills at. <laughs> I thought it was love. All right, we have more with Earthquake, Thomas Q. Jones, and Daisy LeRae. When we come back, Johnson on Bounce TV will be returning for season four on August 3rd, but we'll discuss what happened in the past three seasons. It's way up. I've been way up with Angela Yee. Come right back. More now. What's up? It's Way Up with Angela Yee. I'm Angela Yee, and I'm joined by Earthquake, Thomas Q. Jones, and Daisy LeRae. Daisy is the creator of the show Johnson on Bounce TV. And um, Earthquake, I want to talk to you about um, all the specials that you've done, but your most recent one, Legendary. I feel like you made a lot of people, a lot of men feel like, I got to go get this prostate exam, you know, in that special. Yes. Cause <laughs> yes. I mean, it breaks my heart, my people anyway, that um, we're dying for diseases that's already God has gave a cure to. Mm. And the mental anguish that comes along with, especially the prostate exam, is keeping a lot of the men from um, seeking the necessary treatment they need. And if you are going to have cancer, God forbid, the cancer you want to have is prostate Mm. because it's 99% treatable if detected early. Mm -hmm. And um, as a person that has to always monitor and make sure minds don't get into anything, I do it. And so I just wanted to talk about it and make it funny so you can even, the best way to get my people is laugh them to it. I felt like you should get some type of endorsement with like, (laughs) for real, because, you know, they're trying to figure out how to make men go and go to the doctor even. You know, a lot of people don't even go to the doctor every year. So many women has came to me and said, thank you. Mm. See? So you love Quake, don't you? Quake went over there and got it done. <laughs> you know, and then they had men came to me and uh-huh. actually told me, cry, you saved my life because it was diagnosed and now I'm going through treatment. Wow. Had I not went down there and did it, I wouldn't even be here, to be honest I feel honest like that'd be a good storyline, you know, in the okay. future. Earthquake, Thomas Q. Jones, and Deji LeRae from the show Johnson on Bounce TV are here with me. What are some things that you guys have gone through that that happened on the show? 
I'll let the creator in. <laughs> well, I'll take one of them. Go on to the barber shop and have a bald head and only yeah, have three <laughs> strings, and they charge you like they gave you a full fade. Yeah. $55, and you're like, a tip for what? Yeah, yeah, yeah that's I mean. happened to me, too. You know, uh, on the sh- what they charge them? Uh, $65, $75? $65, dollars. Yeah, $65 yeah, to, to, to shave your beard, you know, and then you got a tip. The tip be like $25. Yeah. Yeah. I can't sympathize. Getting out here done costs more than that. Yeah, so yeah, I don't yeah. Well, you have hair. Yeah, okay. You know what I mean? We're talking about us not having hair. Mm-hmm. That part of it. When he covered that at the barber shop, I stood up and looked at my barber because we were watching that. <laughs> I said, yeah, shop, yeah, I was watching the barber. I said, that's how I feel. Yeah. Every time I pay you. Yeah. You know what I mean? I think it's. I think for me, um, I can't really think of one particular. It's just the beautiful friendship that we have mm-hmm. as, as the four lead characters because we're like that in real life. The playful banter how we make fun of each other's insecurities in a way where it's letting the other person know, hey, it's all right, man. You don't have to take it that seriously. I think that's the part that I really love the most because that's how guys talk. And shout out to the women of Johnson too. And I Mm -hmm. think that's one of the compliments that we get all the time is the show is so well balanced when it comes to these different perspectives. It's not heavily weighed on the men's side or the women's side. It's equally balanced and everybody has a perspective. Right, We we show the men make the mistakes with women and we have the women call them out on it Mm -hmm. but we also have the the friends call the guy out on it too and if you watch all three seasons which is streaming now on Hulu and then season four which will be on balance August 3rd you'll see how far these characters have come from season one to season four. All right. Well, listen, season four, August 3rd on Bounce TV, but you could watch the first three seasons on Hulu right now. Congratulations, though, to you guys. It's amazing to watch the show. And I know if you haven't seen it, y'all need to go back and catch up so that you're with us August 3rd. Thank you so much. Tune into season one so you can see Angela Yee. (laughs) Episode 10. Is episode 10? The finale yes. episode. Yes. Yeah, yes. Angela was doing it. And humbly from one radio person to another, congratulations. Oh, uh, thank right. you. Uh, that means I mean, so much to me. No, yeah. that, congratulations. I know what it took for you to get here, <laughs> and I'm so proud of you. Thank you. I, I would, You so could have never proud. told me I'd be sitting in the same room with Earthquake when I was, you know, coming <laughs> up in this. So I appreciate you. I love you, girl. I love you, I too. for you. Thank right. you, guys. I All appreciate right. y'all so much. The Johnsons. Johnson. All right, you can watch that full interview on my YouTube channel, Way Up With Ye. And when we come back, y'all know you got the last word. It's Way Up. Pick up the phone. Tap in. Tap in and get your voice heard. What the word is. Here's the last word on Way Up with Angela Yee. What's up? It's Way Up with Angela Yee. I'm Angela Yee. Hey, Chella. What up? And Chella is here with me today. That's um, right. After work today, we're going to go work out. I'm ready. We got on our sweats. Yes, we do. <laughs> yeah, we got things going on. But thanks again to the guys from Johnson on Bounce TV for coming through today. That would be Thomas Q. Jones, Deji LeRae, and Earthquake. Y'all got to watch that if you haven't. Seasons 1 to 3 are on Hulu right now. Season 4 starts on Bounce TV on August 3rd. I'm excited for that. And, of course, thank you to everybody for calling in and weighing in on the topic. Chella would tell you, get rid of your pet. If you share it with your ex. I'm telling you. And I'm like, y'all got to go parent. Okay. Aww. Take care of that animal. It's like a child. Get rid of it. <laughs> it's over. But again, you guys, as usual, because this is y'all show, have the last word. Hey, you guys. This is Kane calling from Louisville, Kentucky. Pets are family. Pets are kids. Uh, what my ex does, she drops our husky off at PetSmart to get groomed. And when I, I pick him up, I pay for it, and then he's with me until it's time for him to be groomed again. And then she picks him up and pay for it. There are ways around it to where it's not disrespectful to either party. I want to shine a light on my daughter, Jocelyn, and her boyfriend, Bryce. They are new parents to my grandbaby, Euro Jade. And I just want to let them know that they're doing a fantastic job. Keep it up. I'm here to support you no matter what. I love y'all both. Going way up. Turn up, turn up. With Angela Yee.